Paul Harris. I'm here today with magician, inventor, legend, Paul Harris. Up top. Yes. <laughs> All right. I never do that. <laughs> Basically what I did is I wanted to know what the, inter uh, the internet wanted to know about you. So I asked uh, people on YouTube. The internet's become sentient, huh? Yes, That's interesting. yes. And okay. uh, Facebook and our blog, <clears throat> and these are the questions that we came up with, so. I am so excited. Get ready. Um, the first question comes from Bicycle Magic 29 and he asks, uh, how did you first get into magic? When I was like six years old, I had an Uncle Paul it's a pure coincidence he had the same name, and uh, he took a dime and he put it inside my arm and convinced me it was inside my veins. And I would spend all day trying to pop it out. And uh, so I completely believed in magic at the time, and you know, that's it. I wanted to do more of that. So uh, my Uncle Paul started me off, I think. And what, what was the first magic trick that you learned? Pulling the coin out of my vein. I pulling it, you actually pulled the coin out of your well, vein? Once it goes in, you have to go someplace. So. Jordan asks... Hello, Jordan, by the way. Hello, Jordan. Thank you for that question. This is a good Which question. Is about to come. Do you start with a method that you've discovered when you're inventing a trick, or do you start with an effect that you want to... Well, the easiest thing is to open up someone else's book and look at their method, and then it's going to work backwards from there. So you, you <laughs> find someone else's method that works, and then no, you... No, that was, that was oh. probably frivolous. To <laughs> probably the best stuff comes from working with, with effect first. Mm-hmm. Uh, but sometimes I'll work backwards. You find some interesting little thing, you say, how can we develop that into something? You're always looking for that weird little shiny thing amidst all the stuff, and you go, well, there's something there, the way that card bends, or the way that thing moves, or there's an interesting principle to be teased out of that, and you can start developing it from there. Matt G. asked on the Magic Geek blog, um, what he wanted... G, what does G stand for? I don't know. Uh, it's not there's a period after it. I don't know if that's the full name if it's G period or if it's something else but Matt G so, this one's for you so the period is not spelled out it's, it's not no it's it's it's, it's actually it could be G dot okay I don't know uh, let's see clear here <laughs> I mess up, so. he asks uh, if you could talk a little bit about how your life changed when your apartment burned down and you became a magical nomad <laughs> is there any truth to this, or is he... Oh, yeah, no, this, this happened. It wasn't my part was a house that I was renting. Um, it was great. I had been thinking a long time about really going for a minimalist lifestyle, but at that time I had computers and stereo speakers and lots of books and all stuff. And um, <clears throat> But I've been thinking a lot about simplifying, because once you do a little... It's been a lot of time inventing magic. It's always about elegance and simplicity and how do you get by with less and get down to the bone of things, and eventually it's sort of affecting how you, how you look at the world. And I thought I should really get, you know, simpler in my life. This fire was in the distance, and, and there was a, a warning out about it. And it probably wasn't going to hit the house, but I said, well, this is a good time to experiment. So I grabbed like, one book and two pieces of two shirts and 12 socks. <laughs> and just a handful of things. I threw them in a bag and, threw, and, and took off just, just to have that experience. And uh, I left behind all my expensive stuff. You know, I had some art and things and all those things. And, uh, and lo and, behold, <clears throat> lo and behold, the fire happened, and then the pest was, was just melted down to nothing. And I felt great. I, was, I just had my backpack, and, uh, and it was a really freeing, uh, kind of happy experience for me. And it was, it really made me happy. <laughs> Zane. Zane? Oh, yeah. Zane is okay. this person's name. And it's good names for your clients. They're yeah, they're a very interesting group here. Top top notch geeks, these <laughs> ones. He he wants to know if you're going to continue creating more magic effects and um, and I would like to know what what you have on the horizon. I probably will continue creating more magic effects. It seems something that sort of happens by itself. <laughs> um, every now and then I say no more, that's it, I'm done. And then I invent more stuff for stuff comes down the road, so I guess I'm still doing that, despite my every intention. And I don't like talking about the new things only because people will say, well, when's it coming out? And I'm always be wrong. And I'll spend the next year trying to convince people that, you know, I'm doing everything I can to get it out in time, and I'm sorry, and then they'll say, well, but now, now when's it coming out? And, and so I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> We got a lot of questions. Uh, we also got a lot of comments and compliments on your mustache. This is very funny. Well, I actually heard your very special tribute song that you wrote for me. You got the best.
biggest mustache I've ever seen. Was it your song? Yeah, I did. Yes, that. I was. I was touched by that, and I heard some of the, the mustache comments, and it made me very self-conscious of my mustache. So I went home and started trimming my mustache to make sure it was living up to your expectation of my mustache. And I ended up trimming it too much, and it almost took the mustache off, and that was your doing. So what you have here is about a week's worth of mustache growing back from the edge of being a disaster. And, and that was all you're doing, so uh, life has come full circle. I almost ruined your like mustache. Like Lion King or something, I don't know what's going on here, so. <laughs> This is a big those, deal, because if you ask me what three iconic mustaches were, I'd say Groucho Marx, Tom Selleck, Paul Harris, not necessarily in that order. And for me to have ruined the mustache, it looks great it's right now. Quite a just, 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 well, three days ago you would have said that, so I just had enough time to kind of grow it back in here. Well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, uh, everyone yeah, so appreci appreciates it. It was right on the edge there, though, so tough. Wow. There are to be careful, you have consequences. Power here. Yes. Everything else has to be as a responsibility. Starshock Vids asks. Um, is, that if a, you, is that a name also? That is a, I think that's a username, which is different than a, a name. That sounds name. mean to be a user. Isn't there a better way to say that? He is a, a participant on YouTube. That sounds better. I like that. Named Starshock Vids. And he wants to know if you have any underground creations or tricks or effects that you don't, that you haven't published, purely for the sake of, of things using like, them. Things like things I've like buried in a secret spot in the backyard or something. Yeah, yeah. If you've buried it <laughs> and just dig it up for your own personal use and don't. The only things that are I haven't really published is things I like developed for David Blaine, which he didn't do, but he owns, and can put in his you know sock drawer or something. Um, no, I tend. I enjoy sharing the stuff, and uh, I don't hide, hide things or bury them unless they're really horrible and deserve to be buried. I do bury a lot of effects that didn't quite make it. In your backyard, uh, or someone else's. Sometimes they go in the toilet. Sometimes down the garbage disposal, but they they go away in a, a deep dark place. Could you uh, ask him to change his name, by the way? Uh, Make a yeah. Note there. Appreciate Paul it. Harris wants you to change your name. Okay. From Star Shock Vids to anything to, else. To anything else. <laughs> so good luck with that. Should he change his password as well, or the, probably all be the, better. Probably better all for the best. Just start say. over. Yeah, just start over with your YouTube Blank channel. Here, yeah. I'm a little fragile sometimes. I'm just trouble me. So okay. okay, don't don't shake up Paul Harris with your crazy names. I mean, first mustache, now this. You know, I'm on the edge. So gotta give Paul Harris what he wants. So. Master Clubs Eleven asks, "Who are your biggest influences in in your magic?" There is a guy named Abe Carno, who now works for the IRS, <laughs> and he was the first person who did really good close-up magic with cards, and was also funny. And he was probably the only guy doing funny close-up uh, at the time, and uh, he really opened my eyes up to the possibility of combining the humor and beautiful close-up technology. So I owe a lot to, to Abe for that. Paul Harris Have I mentioned how much I like your box set?